I'd just like to give a quick thank you to WD-40 for sponsoring this video. Good morning everybody, Ryan here. You may notice that the bin fan is running behind me. But Ryan, I thought we sold all the corn, when we in fact did not. So, uh, after I sold my steers, I was planning on feeding up all the corn in the bin. Uh, however, things usually don't work out the way that we like. And uh, since I sold the steers, I need to get rid of the corn that's in the small 2,000 bushel grain bin here at the main farm. So, Hannah's in the 4020. She's pulling it down here for me. We're gonna hook up to the auger and sell what is left of the corn in the grain bin. Now, I just got the truck back yesterday. I had that hole patched in the front hopper. Um, there was cracks along the insides as well, um, down at the bottom, the very bottom that he patched up. So, Hannah's gonna back the tractor down. We're gonna set the auger up. Um, she's gonna go and do other intern stuff while I'm cleaning the bin out. Travis is going to Ted Hay that he cut yesterday, um, which it's a good thing that he did because they were calling for rain yet yesterday, and uh, he wasn't sure if he should or not. And he went and did it. We didn't get any rain like they were calling for, so hopefully we can get all that down at the valley made. It's a pretty warm day. It's really humid, and today's high is like 90, so it's a great day to hop in the bin and clean it out by hand. Put it on the calendar. <laughs> you gotta get that new deadbolt installed. Mm -mm, no, sir. bad it's just it's got that mustiness to it we've got the tractor set up to the auger i've got big red started up and ready to go now the doors were getting kind of sticky the truck's been sitting here for a little while now uh, since we hauled out the rest of the corn and the beans so the traps were getting kind of hard the last time that i had hauled anything so i just had the front hopper repaired as you can see there had a patch put in there was about a seven inch long crack there uh, as well as i had some work done down on the corners of each hopper there was a crack on three of the four sides i think in the front hopper after that's fixed now we should be ready to go for this fall so as you guys know who have been watching for a while uh, i've been trying different things to keep the doors nice and lubed and i found that this wd-40 specialist protective white lithium grease works wonders on these doors um, this stuff, when I first started the season, once I had put this on, I had actually not put anything on for the rest of the season because it kept the doors nice and looped. So I found that I can do about 35,000 bushels and not have any issues with the doors, which last fall I was having to re -lube the doors like every two or three days. So I'm gonna put this white lithium grease on. It's actually quite different from a lot of the WD-40 stuff that I've tried in the past. And uh, this stuff actually stays when you put it on. It's quite interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shake and start spraying the doors down.
something that I found with the white lithium grease WD-40 specialist spray is that I usually have to bring a screwdriver down with me and scrape out these rails. But when this stuff dries, it doesn't allow all that gunk to hold on to the rail. So all I had to do for the back hopper was just use the straw to run along the top and the bottom of that rail and the stuff just pops right out of there. Gotta climb under to do the front now and should be good to pull the truck under the auger and start loading. Look at all that gunk that it blew out on me. All right, just got done spraying this down. Gonna unroll the tarp, which I should have done first because it is like 200 degrees in here. This one has earned its place in the cubby. this corn had a green tinge to it and this corn is not entirely moldy it's just musty and with the musty comes mold and uh, before it gets too bad I wanted to sell this corn we've been running the fan as much as we can but we've had so much rain it's been difficult and uh, looking at the corn it doesn't look real bad but I want to get rid of it before it degrades anymore probably the driving reason why I sold my cattle when I did. This will all fit on one load. Uh, the spin can only hold 2,000 bushels, so it's not gonna be real long before I gotta climb in the bin. There's better corn coming out of it now. When we first started, uh, it was real green and musty. The corn was fine, but there's just green dust coming out with it. And that's the mold. That dust is nasty. Moisture tester says 15, that's right where I want it. I can peek around this door and see that it's right about here. put this corn into the bin last year we hadn't dried it at all so one of my big concerns was molding in the bin uh, however we've been taking samples out of it and it's been reading 15 percent moisture but after we had issues in the sioux bin i've been keeping a close eye on it and before we sold my cows i hopped in and stuck my hand down through and it was good all around the bin except for on the far side there was a hard spot where I would stand on it and put my arm down through it and I couldn't pull up anything. I could reach down and grab the corn that was hard down there and it felt just like all the other corn, but that's one of the signs that you really need to get this corn moved. Now it's time for the fun part. Feels like it's a nice and balmy 76 degrees in here. Celsius, of course.
there's a problem over there I really don't want to address. I'm exhausted. All right, just got all the corn in the semi. Now, I was taking a break because I couldn't breathe in there. I came out and took a look at the semi and I uh, hit the trailer pressure and I noticed that the tractor protection valve was leaking air. So I'm gonna hope now that the problem solved. I, I just figured I'd solve one problem at a time so I just kept loading out. I didn't want to stop and whatever. At least the truck's fully loaded now. So I replaced the tractor protection valve on this truck last year and I think that's what's leaking. I'm not sure why. So I'm gonna have a look at it. I try and take it off. I might run down to truck country if I can get it off by the time they close. I wanted to take this load down today. I didn't want to leave it sit on the truck overnight, but it looks like that's a gonna have to be the case. So let's go over and have a look at the truck. So what I'm talking about is the trailer air supply right here. Press that in. Pressure goes down. Pretty fast, I might add. I'm just glad it happened when I was here and not when I was on the road. Come out. Blowing out pretty hard around that. Well, that'll kick out. I'm gonna go up and get the wrenches I need to start taking that off. Might as well shut the truck off, I guess. Oh, I am exhausted. And there the protection valve just kicked in. There's just two bolts holding that in. This is a pain to do of all the other hoses and stuff that I got to take off. This was almost full when I pulled it out of the fridge. Doesn't look like it's the whole tractor protection valve that's at fault here. It looks like it's those I'm gonna be honest, I don't even really know what they are. It's these two things right back on here. It would seem that it's leaking out right there. You see how those threads are all, you guys probably can't see it that well, but these threads on here are pretty much chopped right up. I'm gonna try to get that off and all I should need is a new fitting, but these don't look, they look like a, almost like a filter. Brittany's dogs are freaking out. She brought her labs up. Um, I'm going to take that fitting off there. I'm probably just going to go get two new of these things, actually. And replace them both. So it doesn't happen to, um, to me on the other side. This happened on the emergency air line for the trailer. The blue is the service and red is emergency. There she goes. <sighs> Got to do that a hundred more times and we'll get it out. Mm. Okay, I just got it off. I'm going to go get two new of these fittings and I'm going to go get two of these little filter, let's call them a filter thingamabob. All right. Oh, that can't be healthy. Oh, it's just a little warm today. So I just went to truck country and picked up this. Turns out that this is not just a thingamajig or thingamabob. It is actually meant to stop any back pressure from the trailer going towards the truck. So that's what they're meant to do. I got two of them. Right now I'm only going to put on one. Um, not going to replace the other side too. But just got to screw it in and 
we're gonna try it out. All right, I got the new valve on there. Let's hope that solved the problem. This is the trailer air supply. Everybody cross your fingers for me. That was our issue. So now, I'm just gonna leave the truck here because it's too late in the day to take this down. I hope that they're open tomorrow. Otherwise, this load's gonna sit on here until at least Monday and that's not something I'm okay with. So, everybody cross your fingers for that too because it seemed to work pretty good last time. Shut that off. I'm gonna take the auger down because there's no point in it being up now, but I'm gonna back it up to where it was. Unhook the 4020 real quick. And then tomorrow, first thing, I'm gonna run this down provided that they are open. And get rid of this corn. Be interesting to see. Best I can tell is that it's a full load. Um, when I was in the bin, it filled up the second hopper. I saw the corn coming up, so. Looks like it should be. I'm gonna check back here real quick. I estimated it was around 800 bushels. Yeah, this didn't even fill up, so I don't have a good estimate. So I'll see you guys in the morning. So now it's Monday and Gavilon is open. So we're gonna be taking that load of corn down that I loaded last Thursday. It's been sitting Thursday to Friday to Saturday to Sunday to Monday. So that's four days it's been sitting on the semi. Less than optimal, but uh, with that, uh, threading that blew on the truck not really a whole lot of, that could be prevented about that so now the gavilon's open um the corn market is actually up so i guess it worked in my favor <laughs> um we're gonna take that load down and drop it off
just pulled through the outbound scale and the test weight was 56, moisture 14.5, just about perfect. The damage 1.5, foreign material 1. And our gross weight was 81,520 pounds, so I was about 1,500 pounds overweight. Didn't think that I would be quite that full. I was hoping for a thousand pound or a thousand bushels, which I did get. I had 1,015 bushels and a third of a bushel. So yeah, I'm gonna head back to the farm now. I'm I'm happy that I had a thousand. Now if corn minus all their deductions, so I don't know what it's gonna be exactly, but if I had a thousand bushels, corn right now, futures is like 356. Subtract the basis off there, which is usually anywhere between 15 and 30 cents. I think right now it's a 20 would be a good guesstimate. So that's about $3,200 that I could be expecting to see from that load. I didn't think it was over a thousand. I mean, I was hoping for a thousand because every man can dream, but I like to be conservative when it comes to those numbers. All right, let's head back to the farm. There. Now we should be all done hauling. That's what I always say. Now we should be done hauling until the crops that are out in the fields right now need to come off. So I came to find out that the corn inside the bin wasn't really moldy at all. Uh, it was just musty. So when the corn inside the bin started sweating, it started to accumulate the moisture on the outside of the kernels. And that moisture, that condensation, is what started molding. And that's what gave me all my problems. Uh, the corn inside was still really good quality and um, I just figured might as well be safe over sorry considering what we had happen with this bin um, just to be safe I wanted to sell it rather than hold on to it as long as possible corn price is up so I'm happy so that's pretty much it for this video guys thanks for watching be sure to check out all of our other videos be sure to like comment and subscribe and be sure to follow us on Facebook Instagram Twitter and Snapchat all how farms work and if you guys are interested, we've got new How Farms Work wristbands in stock on our store. So go to howfarmswork.com. There's a link down in the description to go to our store. Uh, that would be the blue one, not the red one. The red one is the Hannah Special. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.